We're gonna talk about recruiting mistakes today. Anyway, very excited because I've got the one, the only Michelle Churchill in the house. And guys, listen, we're gonna talk about mistakes. And of course, we're gonna give you solutions. We're gonna give you ideas and concepts that flat out work. So how many of us are excited? Now, I want to introduce you to Michelle because she literally is the top recruiter in our entire organization. I'm pretty sure in the entire world with our company. I mean, literally, she recruits double digits every single month, even outsells most of the people in the entire company. I think there's maybe one or two people in the world that sell more than her. So she's not just recruiting. She's not just selling. She's also duplicating success. And don't you guys agree that's kind of a big deal inside network marketing? In fact, Michelle, I hate to put you on the spot, but before we get into the training, uh, do you have any idea what you've done the first six months of this year as far as personal enrollments and then also personal sales? Oh, you had wow. to <laughs> I mean, I remember the first 90 days you were at like 96 recruits and then you had like 200,000 in personal sales. Yeah, because I don't do less than 50,000 in my in my customer pot each month. <laughs> I don't recruit less than 10 people and I've had months where I did 32. How many of us are just like, dude, I just want to get like 10 for the year. I get it. I understand. We all started stuck. Write that down. That's tip number one. Be okay with playing the long game. See, what's great about Michelle, she gets that, but she also has a lot of urgency. Like when she first got started, I still remember one of the first things you messaged me when you joined, you said, I'm used to reaching out. This is before she joined our team, right? This is like two years ago when she first joined. So this is like a month in. She's like, hey, I used to reach out to 50 people a day. I was like, well, I was really like, wow. She's like, should I keep doing that? I'm like, I mean, you don't necessarily have to, but I mean, sure, if you're doing it anyway, why not just continue doing it? If nothing else, to at least connect with people. And I think today, do you still reach out to that many? Yes, I have at least a minimum of 50 people that I'm communicating with every single day and I can't go to sleep unless it's done. I know some of us are gonna go, oh my gosh, I have a full-time job, I can't do this, I can't do that. Listen, Michelle couldn't do that either when she first got involved in the profession six, was it six years or seven years ago? Six years. Six years ago. So six years ago, she couldn't either. But now that she's full-time, of course she has more time. She has more people to reach out to. Again, we all start somewhere. Even if you've been in the industry longer than Michelle, who cares? She knows what to do because she did some of the wrong things. She made some mistakes in the beginning. And a lot of us are guilty. Even at my level, there's still times where I'm like, oh, I messed that conversation up or I forgot to follow up with that person. Sometimes because we're trying to go so fast or we're trying to automate some of these processes that we end up skipping over the relationship piece the reason Michelle is crushing it, I'm telling you, I'm in her chats. I'm in all her prospecting chats with all her prospects. She follows up all the time and she is very good at connecting, which is probably something we don't emphasize enough. So first of all, maybe you could share with people like some of the mistakes first that you made in the beginning. And then we can talk about some of the mistakes that you see people in your team making, or you see other marketers in the field making. And I know we could talk all day about this stuff, so I'm excited, but get into some of those like those big ones, the obvious ones that you made in the beginning. And then we'll talk about what we see other people doing. All right, so for the first, there is a big mistake is that I would get inside my head and say to myself, this person doesn't need an additional stream of income. I was judging a book by its cover. That was number one. So when people were signing up for the products, I was not asking if they were open to taking a look at how we earn an additional stream of income. So after doing a ton of trainings and being a part of challenges that you know John hosts and video challenges, you have to really make sure that you're popping that question. But there's a reason why you really should pop the question. Number one, it plants a seed. That person now is forever, every day that they wake up and take that product, they're thinking about ways that they can earn an additional stream of income. And I feel like it makes them fall in love and believe in the product that much more. And number two, I'm telling you right now that the way I word anyone who's signing up, it's a very natural approach. If you know they're buying something, like say they're ordering a chocolate bottle of collagen, I know this is generic, but for an example in my company, all I'm saying is I'm like, that is an amazing flavor, great choice, I'm really excited for you. I'm curious, do you like money? Ha ha ha, like no, could you use some extra money? I'm picky about who I choose to work with and then I enter a compliment like, you're a nice person, you're a positive person, you already show up on social media, would you be open to taking a look at what it is that I do? 
if it doesn't interfere with what it is that you're already doing. So you're automatically kind of lifting it up a little bit by letting them know that this isn't going to interfere with their full-time job. This isn't going to interfere with them going to school. And I always give an out, if not, no big deal. I will tell you eight out of 10 times, it's a yes. Does that mean that they sign up as a social retailer right then and there? No, but it plants a lot, a lot, a lot of seeds. So that's number one. Just pop the question to every single person. Get in the habit, the negative thoughts of scarcity, have an abundant mindset, okay? Play the victor, not the victim, and just do it as if it's a part of your job. If every single day you worked in a corporate job where you had X, Y, and Z, you're gonna do X, Y, and Z. It's a part of the system. So when you look at this as a system, it all will play into itself. Number two, a huge one, and John saw this this weekend, I sometimes try to automate my follow-ups for people wanting to be marketers. And then I voice noted, John saw, Saturday morning, six o'clock, like, what's up? How's it going? I see something on the wall. Cute dog. I'm so excited for you. Hey, listen, there's a little bit of some urgency on this because we only have about 72 hours. But really, I have this intuition about you. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. But even when we partner together, it's going to be fun. We're going to help a lot of people. So I have to ask you. There's a promo on a scale of one to 10 so I can figure where they're at. One being not interested, 10 being like, show me the way. I love money. I'm nervous, but I can do nervous things. Let's do <laughs> who stand. And John saw I signed up five people over the weekend because they're like, okay, let's go. They hear your voice. They hear your excitement. They see that you actually care. But prior to that, We've been having a few promos that I've just been texting it. It's not the same when you actually send a voice message. And it yep. is not hard. When we do three-way chats, I label all mine with fire emojis. So all I have to do in my search bar, which I didn't do, which is a bad mistake that I was doing prior to having this system down, was I wasn't labeling them. Now I can search fire emoji in the top search bar and all of them pop up. So I can just bam, 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 go right through them. Do it while you're having some coffee, be in a good mood, don't do it on a bad day, and get in there and circle back to these people. It takes about six or seven times, but every time you do it, I want you to envision a pumpkin seed inside of a, any type of seed. You can't see the roots that are underneath. Everything that you're doing matters. Everything that you're doing, that person is paying attention to, and they're watching you behind closed doors. And wouldn't you agree, one of the mistakes is people don't even do chats. They try to recruit the people all by themselves, right? They try to do all the rapport building, question answering, pointing them towards the tools, and then also trying to be the recruiter, the mentor, the leader, the upline, and they do it all by themselves. I talked about this the other day. It's a big mistake. If you're not, look, Michelle doesn't need to put her prospects in chats any more than I do but we both do every single time. It's relatable. And honestly, that's another thing that was a big mistake of mine until I partnered with John and have the system that we have. You don't need to be starting three-way chats and being in here like, my product's amazing. All you do is, this is John. He's my business partner. He's number one in our company. He's been in the industry for 20 years. He's seen the good, the bad, the ugly. He's so much fun to learn from. This is my friend Val. She's been in the industry for six years. She started doing this on the side of being a you know, um, speech pathologist. She's got three kids under the age of five. She crushes it. She loves it here. And then maybe one more person. And the second they share their story, you don't sit there and go, see how amazing this is? You ask your closing questions. So literally in the chat, I know a lot of people reach out to me. When John's in the chat with me, I'm like, hey, Brittany, how much extra per month would make this meaningful to you? Brittany shoots me back. Okay, perfect. So we can definitely help you with that. Would you say you're positive, coachable, willing to grow and hungry for more? Because you need those characteristics. I don't care about your following. I don't care about how you create content. We all start at suck. No one comes out of the womb having a social media following. No one comes out knowing how to do videos. I didn't know how to do any of this. Mm -hmm. You guys actually are getting the tools that work because I failed so many times doing it the wrong way that finally it led me to doing the right way. So I'm not in my chats like just conversating and being like college in this and college in that. And then the third question is you just reiterate, good, I'm glad you're positive, coachable, willing to grow and hungry for more. 
the next step would be to get you started on a kit. Would you be open to me sharing information about that? Or, you know, whatever, there's verbiage. We have a script. I never pull it up. And then they, you just show them the kits. You show them what you went with and you close them and you're on your way. Less is more. Okay, when they're in that chat, they're on it. And I feel like some people that put me in their chats, they're not following the system. And then lastly, not having it in my stories every single day. There are new eyeballs on your stories. And an example is we do a referral giveaway post every single month. And it's a great way to get prospects because what happens is number one, put this post up for me. It's non spammy. I'm going to get you free product credits. I'm going to handle everything. And then number two, you watch this five minute video. Now you've got a second entry. So your chances of winning this is even more. I put that on my stories. I, I, I post it once a week. Every time I get a minimum of seven people who drop some type of emoji to get entered in, I need to be more consistent. I couldn't imagine if I did that seven days a week. I don't see enough going to your stories and seeing that you even have a miracle in your mouth. Mm -hmm. I don't starting on day five of this and you make a dollar twenty two. You're a dollar twenty two more rich than you were when you didn't have this opportunity. <laughs> so getting used to in your stories, showing something or even putting words you don't have to show your face saying like it's crazy to think that six years ago I had sixty thousand dollars in debt I literally didn't have Instagram I didn't have TikTok so you have more leverage than I do right now and today I was able to go get a massage or I was able to pay off my credit card hundred dollars whatever it is even if it's ten dollars the something you couldn't do before I'm so grateful I said yes those people are wondering what did you say yes to because now you're curiously showing up through social media and you're doing curiosity marketing. When you have a product, you don't want to tell them what that product's going to do. You want to have it on there like this is an absolute game changer. Draw them in. I'm so grateful that I said yes. It is going to eat them away. They're going to wish that you put it on there. So now when they're on your stories, every single day, you're having new conversations and inviting them to see it. And if you're not, that's rude because they're seeing it and they're wondering. They're not gonna reach out to you. They're just as afraid to reach out to you as you are to reach out to them. So those are my biggest tips when it comes to recruiting and prospecting. You need to realize it does not happen overnight and it is a process and it is following up and it is planting seeds and it is inviting them, like we have every Saturday a call at noon. So how smart is it every single weekend or right before the weekend to be like, hey, we got this call tomorrow. This is the call that I hopped on that made me go from a one and two of wanting to get started to a 10, let's grow. Tune into it, be a fly on the wall. No one's going to see you. Listen and then circle back and let me know what you liked best about it. Mm. People actually get on and listen. And John's really good at doing that. Like really, really, really good. He does it on what he calls follow up Friday. So those are my biggest tips and biggest tricks for doing it. And you're not gonna become amazing at doing it until you actually do it. So you have to just get out there. You have to just rip the bandage off and you have to know how you get good at doing something is by doing it.